Penny Cooks here. Today we're going to discuss all the tips and tricks to make this yummy soul food meal. Fried chicken, collard greens, and baked macaroni and cheese. So let's get to cooking. To start off with, we're going to soak and wash our chicken. I know there's a lot of controversy in the news and the blogs as to whether you should do this step or not, but I do. You can see all of the grime and fatty pieces that come off in the water and I don't want to cook that. Now let's season our chicken. So I'm starting off with Badia Complete Seasoning. I'm going to season liberally because we're going to marinate this overnight to get the best flavor in the chicken. I'm using poultry seasoning, this big container. You can order this on Amazon. I have a link in the description box. One thing I didn't do here that you can do is use a paring knife, a small knife to cut a slit in the meat that's underneath the skin so that the seasonings can penetrate all the way into the meat. Other seasonings you can use that we didn't use at this step are listed on the screen. For this marination overnight, we're going to make a buttermilk brine. Yes, I said marination. Buttermilk brine. So we're going to soak our seasoned meat in buttermilk. This will help tenderize it and add flavor overnight. If you don't do this overnight, at least try to do it for a couple of hours. I'm just going to sort my chicken pieces, like puzzle pieces, to get them all underneath the brine. I love this Pyrex bowl. It's actually a set of bowls that come in one set. This is the four quart. I have a link to this as well. And I love these plastic tops. So while that's going overnight, the next day we're going to go ahead and process our collard greens. So these are my collard green leaves. You can see some of them are turning a little bit yellow and that's okay. We'll just rip off the pieces we're not going to cook. I'm going to clean it in white vinegar and I'm also going to add fat back and onion to the cooking process and we're going to make this in the instant pot so it's going to be super quick so this is frozen fat back you don't have to use meat you can absolutely make this vegan so to start cleaning your greens you just want to take a leaf and rip the leaf part off of the stem so you'll have these uh, naked stems to throw away or you can actually juice them to make a healthy juice so there we have our collard green leaves i'm actually going to chop these up before i wash them It'll just make washing easier for me. Some people may want to wash theirs before they chop them. It's completely up to you. I cut my greens kind of in a messy way. Um, I just grab a bunch and I start slicing. I usually do mine in big squares. Some people do neat little julienne strips. Some people use kitchen shears to cut them. It's really up to you. It's going to cook down anyway. And I like a fork size piece of collard green when I eat this so that's why I'm doing it this way after I cut them I'm going to place them in another bowl to prep them for washing washing is very important these greens grow in the ground so they can they will contain dirt and sand it might even be some little garden bugs in there so with my cool water I'm adding white vinegar I'm going to let this all soak for a bit and use my hand to agitate the greens to get any of the dirt and grit off of them and to get it to drip down to the bottom of the bowl. After a period of time, I lift the greens up out of the vinegar water and put them into another bowl and I fill that with clean water. So we're going to do this process about three or four times. We're going to make sure we wash off all the dirt and at the bottom of the bowl we don't see any more sand or grit left in it. While I'm doing that, I am going to go ahead and slice up my onion. I put a kitchen towel underneath my plastic cutting board. I love these cutting boards. They're so convenient and easy to use and you definitely want a sharp knife. Links to my favorite items are in the description box. They'll be in the description box for every video. So just slice up your onions. If you don't like onions, you can certainly leave them out of your greens. Um, some people add a variety of vegetables to their greens like um, hot peppers or pickled red sweet peppers. I'm going to start off with the saute function for five minutes to saute my fat back. Now I did wash some of the salt off of this fat back because I didn't want it too salty. So it's on and you can see it going now. So we're basically just going to render out the fat. It's on hot saute. We're going to render out the grease. This is what's going to help flavor this particular pot of greens. So I took out my fat back after it cooked. Now with this um, 
instant pot pressure cooker still in saute mode, I'm going to drop in my onions and give them a delicious saute. Even at this point, it smells so good. Now that my onions are sauteed, I'm going to increase the saute time on my Instant Pot because I'm going to put these greens in the Instant Pot. They're gonna cook super quick on pressure cook, but before we get to that step, I'm actually going to saute my greens to give them a head start. So that is definitely a pro tip for cooking greens in your Instant Pot. Look at that beautiful fat bat. I just wanted to show y'all my nails anyway. Those are press on nails. <laughs> so, I'm mixing up my greens and now I'm going to add my fat back. What I'm going to add my greens. Now what you notice is I didn't add any extra water. So when I wash these greens and put them in a bowl, there's naturally some water still on them. That's all you need for your pressure cooker. So as I put in a few handfuls, you'll notice that I didn't overfill the Instant Pot. And I am sauteing it down and the greens are actually going to cook down and release moisture while they're sauteing. So I'm using my tongs to just gently flip the greens from the bottom of the pot to the top of the pot so that all of them can get sauteed. So now I'm going to add some seasoning, complete seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, the same seasonings you would use to cook your greens on the stove, you would also use to cook them in the Instant Pot. Poultry seasoning and black pepper. So basically I'm adding a few handfuls at a time, giving it a saute, and then adding a few more handfuls until all of my greens are in the pot. In your Instant Pot, if you've used it, you know there is a max fill line. You never wanna go over that line before you cook. I'm adding a couple of pieces of fat back to the pot. You can see how all those greens cook down to almost half or 40% of the previous volume. So now I'm gonna add the lid and turn off the saute function so that I can turn on the high pressure pressure cook function. And y'all, this is what's so amazing about cooking these collard greens in the pressure cooker. I have this set to 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes for soul food collard greens. So after it cooks, I let it sit for a few minutes while I was doing other things to let the pressure steam then out and release. So now I can take the top off the lid. Y'all look at that. How beautiful are those greens? Now at this point, you do want to give your greens a taste to see if it needs any additional seasoning. Some people will add some hot sauce or you can add apple cider vinegar. Some people also may add a tablespoon of sugar. I've done all of those things at different points for different pots of greens, but this one I didn't and it was absolutely delicious anyway. I am going to add a little bit more no salt. I am intentionally trying to cook with less salt to reduce the amount of sodium that my family takes in, knowing full well that this pork had some sodium in it as well. So look at this, y'all. I plated up my greens in a beautiful bowl, and now I took a couple of pictures with these beautiful greens. And next up, we're going to get started with our macaroni and cheese. So these are the ingredients I'm using. I'm seasoning with Coleman's mustard. This dry mustard is very important. You can get it from Amazon. I use a combination of white cheese. This is cheddar and gruyere, Gru blah, 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 however you say that G word, cheese. It's very um, delicious. And then I also use extra sharp cheddar cheese and I have my grater and I have a glass container to cook it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and boil my macaroni noodles. As a soul food cook, I usually don't measure and so you'll see I'm just pouring in macaroni from my pasta canister so I can't tell you exactly how much I use it's more important to be comfortable with the proportions you're cooking and we'll get into that a little bit later so while that pasta is boiling I'm gonna go ahead and start grating up my cheese it is always better to grate your own cheese so that it doesn't have that special coating on the shredded cheese that prevents it from melting. It can be kind of caulky. I don't have that problem with the um, 
Italian cheese bag. I only use about eight ounces of it. In total, I'm using 32 ounces of cheese for the 13 by nine glass pan. You'll see me breaking up the cheese chunks. When it gets down to the nub, I don't try to grate that because I don't want to grate my finger. So just break it off and everyone appreciates a little chunk of cheddar cheese in the macaroni. At least they do in my family anyway. You don't have to use white cheeses. I just like the flavor of strong cheeses and I like to use a variety. So that's my personal preference. Here is our grated up cheese. So we're gonna start off making a cheese sauce. This helps to ensure your macaroni cheese dish is creamy and that this cream sauce will fill up each individual noodle in your dish. So it's going to make it extremely delicious. It won't be dry which is a problem some people have with their macaroni and cheese. So I just mixed some milk and a couple of handfuls of cheese. Again, you're just going for a particular consistency of a cheese sauce. You'll know it when you see it. I will do this video again with exact measurements, probably when I'm ready to post a video on my blog, tannycooks.com, coming up soon next year, 2020. So for now, we're just gonna keep stirring our cheese and you can see the cheese pull. You could add a tablespoon of flour here, but I don't usually find that to be necessary for my personal taste. You want to wipe or grease your pan down with some butter. If you don't have butter, you can use butter spray, cooking spray. So I drained my pasta in a colander and now I'm pouring some of it, not all of it, into my baking dish. I'm going to add this in layers. So now I'm adding some of the cheese sauce. You could actually mix your pasta noodles in the pot with cheese sauce, which I do sometimes, but today I didn't. And I'm using this whisk because I was already using it for the cheese sauce. This powder, um, this dry mustard doesn't come with a sprinkler thing on top of it. It's just like an open canister. So I like to take a couple of pinches in my hand and put it in my container so that I don't use too much mustard. We're adding cheese. We're adding our seasonings like black pepper. And then we're adding more cheese. We wanna make sure each bite of this macaroni pie is flavorful, so that's why we're doing it in steps and mixing as we go. So now I'm adding the last bit of pasta, I'm adding additional seasoning. If you don't have dry mustard, you can use a teaspoon or two of uh, prepared yellow mustard. You just don't want to overdo it with your mustard. The last bit of cheese sauce, you'll notice I changed from that whisk to a spoon and now I'm adding more cheese. My cheese doesn't get as dark as others because I do use that combination of white and yellow cheese, but it's your personal preference of what cheese you look, you use. So you'll notice we have the cheese sauce and I'm also adding freshly grated cheese to the final dish. I like to do both. To me, it gives the best result and the best flavor and consistency. So now I'm adding milk. So we had some milk added in our cheese sauce and now I am adding more milk. Couldn't tell you how much because I'm just pouring it from the gallon milk container, but you just wanna balance between the noodles and the custard that's gonna be formed as it bakes with the cheese and milk. So I'm pouring a little bit of milk and then I'm stirring it all together and you can see the milk has sunk into the bottom so I'm adding a little bit more this milk is going to turn into the custard and that's a delicious part of this final dish so you want your noodles to be a little bit loose because the milk is going to be absorbed into your pasta a bit and you don't want the final product to be dry so once you have the milk added I'm adding more cheese on top like I said this was 32 ounces of cheese in this total 13 by 9 pan. I really feel like I could have used another uh, 8 ounces of cheese, but that's just me. I like to finish off with some butter on top. This happens to be vegan butter. Just about a tablespoon cut into four pieces. This will help the top to brown and add flavor, of course. So I'm going to add some foil. And to be sure the foil doesn't stick to the cheese on top, you know, kind of like the cheese can stick to the top of a pizza box. I'm spraying some of the butter spray on top. We're going to cook this for about 45 minutes to an hour at 350 degrees. Halfway through, take the aluminum foil off and look at how beautiful our macaroni and cheese pie is. Okay, last step is to cook our chicken. This is the flour mixture and these are the seasonings I'm using for the flour mixture. Lemon pepper, garlic, an herb 
dry mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, seasoning salt, black pepper. Look at that, y'all. I'm just giving it a mix with my highly professional plastic fork. Our chicken has been marinating overnight, so I took it out a few minutes before I started making my flour. Remember, our brine is seasoned and our flour is seasoned. So I like my stoneware pot. I do have a deep fryer and I use that when I'm cooking a whole bunch of chicken, but this is just a small amount. So I'm just gonna use a pot on the stove so I don't use up all of this expensive canola oil. So I'm adding some Crisco canola oil to my, um, one of my favorite pots. You can buy this pot set on Amazon, link in the bio. Now, I do believe in saving where I can. So I do save some oil and I keep it in that canister and I fry with it again if it's not burnt or discolored. So I'm taking my buttermilk chicken out of the buttermilk and I'm adding it to the seasoned flour. When you add your chicken to the flour, you want to do it in stages so that you can make sure each piece of chicken is sufficiently coated. Don't try to add all your chicken from the brine into your flour at one time, unless you have a huge pot that most of us don't have in our home kitchen. When you flour your chicken, you want it to stay in this flour for at least 10 or 15 minutes. You could take it out the flour and let it sit on a rack on the side, but you want it to sit with the flour on it for 10 or 15 minutes before you fry it. It will help the coating to stay on and be extra delicious and yummy and crunchy afterwards. So our oil is heating up and I'm starting to add my pieces. I don't have a thermometer in there. Um, you can just kind of tell by the sizzle that it's where it needs to be. I do flip my chicken around every couple of minutes to make sure it's perfectly golden. It takes about 15 to 18 minutes to cook. You'll see it start to float. You'll see the color be golden. But to ensure that we're at the perfect temperature, a safe internal temperature, about 165 degrees for dark meat, you wanna use a meat thermometer. That's the easiest way to make sure your meat is fully cooked. You could take this out at 160 degrees. You'll notice that the meat temperature will continue to rise as it sits. So our chicken is exactly where we want it to be for safe consumption. I like my frying splatter guard, that red thing. It keeps this grease from popping in my face, which has happened way too many times. But look at how beautiful this is. Y'all, this is absolutely amazing and delicious. Like, I really don't feel a need to go to a restaurant for chicken when I can just make it at home. It's cheaper and it oftentimes tastes better. Look at that chicken thigh, y'all. Just so perfect. You do want to salt your meat after you fry it, whether it's chicken or fish. So I'm adding seasoning salt. You could also add smoked sea salt. But again, this is the reason why I use no salt in my brine because I knew I'd be using salt at the end. So people would definitely be able to taste it. Okay, y'all, that was the whole tutorial. So this is me taking the macaroni out. Look at that, macaroni and cheese, collard greens. Oh my goodness, 15 minutes in the Instant Pot. Beautiful, beautiful macaroni and cheese. And our gorgeous fried chicken. I'm gonna let this grease cool and save some of it. Look at that, y'all. Macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, collard greens. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and send this video to any new cook or young cook you know and let's get a conversation started about your favorite tips for cooking these same dishes. Thank you so much for watching this video.